Hello, today I have a Satoshi 100 watt USB-C charger. If you're new to the channel, there's a whole series on these power adapters where I test them for the power in and out while also comparing them to other offerings. There are billions of power adapters in use and this series will help you make an informed buying decision since not all devices are created equal. So let's go ahead and open this device up. I looked around the box and I couldn't see where it actually tells you anywhere about what it can do for power delivery or what it can charge or really anything. It's a charger though. It has GAN though, they had to write that on there somewhere. So they give you a user manual where they just identify some basics. They tell you you can plug it in, tell you it'll give you 100 watts. They really seem proud of that LED indicator. And as I was mentioning before, I don't see anywhere in here where they actually tell you uh, what it can do. So probably one of the most vague manuals I've ever seen. So here's a first look at the power adapter itself. And you can see the 100 watt GAN has one USB-C port, a little LED. It's got the logo on one side. Flip out plugs. And the stuff we start to care about. So we can see the model number here, input power. We can see they claim 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts. And we also see that it has a PPS mode, which delivers 3.3 to 20 volts. You can see the ETL safety listing, FCC, seeing a lot of these. So yeah, it's got a proper US Canada safety listing. Overall, doesn't seem too bad. It is heavy. So let's check those weights. The packaging for the Satoshi weighs 64 grams, quite a bit higher than the others. The Satoshi power adapter weighs 193 grams also on the heavy side. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. All right, so the unit's plugged in. We can take a look at the power consumption. We can see it's about 0.05. That's very good. We have a VA number here, which is literally the multiplication of the volts times the amps. And we can see that that number is kind of high. So this idle current is a little on the high side. We can't change this. So the current is a little high. So we end up with about 2.7 VA. And the other number here that's power factor. And power factor is the division of the watts by the VA. So this is just doing some math for us to make this easier. The lower this power factor number, it tells you the larger the ratio of the extra current for the amount of watts that are being used. So we wanna see this number be one. That's the best case scenario. Here in this case, we have a very, very low number, but this is again, is the idle condition. It's a very, very low power consumption. So this is acceptable. Another thing we look at for our power quality is total harmonic distortion particularly in this case on the current side. And total harmonic distortion is important because what happens is you have extra harmonics that are coming into the, the signal basically. So you have your 60 Hertz AC or 50 Hertz AC, and then you have all these other harmonics that are happening up above that. So you have 100 Hertz and 150 Hertz and 200 Hertz and all these other things. And those things just create extra power loss. So we don't wanna see those. So this percentage is telling you how much of a percent of those unwanted terms you have. So this device did claim five, as you can see here, nine, 12, 15, 20, and a 20 volt PPS mode. So it has all of the claimed modes, so that's great. One thing we saw is this, this number over here started jumping all over the place when we started to change those modes. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on a light load. Let's go ahead and take this up to 10 watts. This would represent a 10% load for this device. And we can see our power factor is still pretty low, so our VA is gonna be high. Uh, but you know, we're not using that many watts, so our efficiency is pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and change through the modes and see if anything changes here. 40 watts, no change. 45 watts, there it goes. So what you just saw there was the, this, this device does in fact have active power factor correction and it just kicked in at that mode right there. And so this is something I went through and discovered with this device. It will only turn on that power factor correction mode under a certain number of watts. So really only when it's heavily charging. So when it's like at end of state of charge, it's gonna turn that power factor correction back off again. So that's not good. And also it only turns it on in the 20 volt mode. So if you're uh, operating at the 15 volt mode, for example, it will not turn on the power factor correction. So 45 watts, I wanna use as my example here. We're on 45 watts in the 15 volt mode. And we can see that the power factor is pretty poor right now. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and switch to the 20 volt mode now. And now that we're on the 20 volt mode, still 45 watts, we can see that our power factor has actually gotten a lot better. So this does have active power factor correction, but it's very selective about when it turns on that active power factor correction. So I wanted to give another example of this. 
And so now we're looking at the peak current that the unit is drawing. So we can see we're using about two amps right now of peak current, again, the 45 watts and the 15 volts. When we go ahead and turn this on, the 20 volt mode, still 45 watts, and we can see our peak current has dropped to only 0.6 amps. Uh, this number over here would have changed too, but I wasn't paying attention. Uh, so now, now we're drawing three times lower current uh, for the same amount of power. So the, the peak current dropped by three times, so that's, that's impressive. So this shows the advantage of that power factor correction being turned on with three times lower peak current. So you can imagine if you had a lot of these power devices all plugged in at once, uh, this peak current's gonna get pretty unruly pretty fast. So having power factor correction keeps this number nice and low. Uh, we're gonna do this and look at the THD. So here we can see our THD number is about 115%. Again, we're on that 45 watts and 15 volts. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the 20 volts and we're gonna see what happens. Drop to 12%. So huge decrease in the THD. So this is a much cleaner signal, much better signal. And again, we're still doing that 45 watts, but the only thing we changed is we went up to the 20 volt mode. So this device seems pretty exclusive in trying to deliver the power factor corrected modes only to that 20 volt mode, which isn't so nice. It's a, it's a big downfall for the what ends up being the power quality of this unit. So we're gonna keep this in the 20 volt mode. Let's go ahead and take it up to overload and see what it can do. I'm gonna go right to 100 watts. So we're at our 100 watts, so that's the full rated load. It'll do this no problem. Let's go up to 110 watts, 115 watts, 120 watts, 122 watts, 123 watts, 124 watts, 125 watts, and it's out. This device recovered back to the five volts, so it was able to do that. But yeah, delivering 125 watts is it's kind of pushing. It's a little on the high side for the 100 watt USB specification, but yeah, sometimes they want to push that a little more. So if anything, people might think of that as a feature, whereas this device can actually deliver a little beyond what they, they claim it can deliver. For an, for an overload protection, it's not going to kick in until 125 watts. So something to think about. All right, so when we take a look at the overall numbers for this one, we can see that the power in is not bad. The THD is pretty good. Uh, so it gets a pretty good power quality score for this idle mode. As we step up through, we can see it's kind of a tale of two power adapters. When the power factor correction is off, it's not very good. When the power factor correction kicks in, it's awesome. So when we take a look at this compared with other devices, we can see that it's, it's towards the top of the stack. You know, it falls short of the hyphen X. It's basically the same as the neck tech device. When we look at the idle score, we can see that it's actually on the higher side. It's got low power consumption and reasonable power quality in that mode. When we look at the overall power performance graph for this, we can see that it's not the top of the stack. It's not the bottom of the stack. It's kind of in the middle. And it's in the middle because it does that multi-mode thing where it turns the power factor correction on and off. The idle power consumption is, uh, you know, among a class leader, especially in a 100 watt class adapter to drop down to 0.05 watts is extremely good. So in conclusion, the Satoshi power adapter is a mid-tier performer. It's a 100 watt delivery device. It has a safety listing, so it's not going to burn your house down. It is expensive, so it's a $70 power adapter, so it's definitely on the high side of the price line. Um, but it where it falls short is it doesn't turn on the power factor until you're in that 20 volt mode. So if you're charging a device and it doesn't have a PD mode that can use 20 volts, it won't ever turn on the power factor correction. You know, it's okay. It's a good power adapter. It's got quality. It has a lot of benefits in that side. It does have power factor correction. I really wish that this power adapter had the power factor correction in all the modes. You know, that's really the thing that's driving this one down. It's something that they could have done, they chose not to do. If you need a power adapter and you want to charge a Mac device, because this is primarily intended for those, then this is not a bad choice to pick up. If you want to save a little money, the Hyphen X is a good adapter too. I'll have them all linked down in the description, so check them out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.